Debbie Gibson with a giant hit at 16 years old, uh, only in my dreams. Here, uh, how, did you go to rehab at some point? <laughs> how, why were you 40 years old looking so smoking hot, totally together? Did you ever melt down at any time? I, you know, I melt down in the privacy of my own home and in my shrink's office. That's where you should and be melting yes, down. Yes, I just don't take it to the streets, you know? Or to reality TV. Or to reality <laughs> TV. <laughs> right? Much to the dismay of many a publicist. Right. They just didn't, they were like, wait, we actually have to work to get you press? Where's your, where's your fabulous rehab story? Just don't make this one. easy on me. Collapse and we'll help know, spin it for you. Exactly. What do you think of, you know, 16, the 16 now is Justin Bieber. Look at a guy like that. I mean, you know, is his, is he doing it the right way? Do you think he... I mean, you know, it's it's tricky because uh, every award show I see him on, every TV show, first of all, he sings like a dream. He sounds great. Um, he's got it yep. going on. He seems very humble and together, but then it's like as humble as you can be when you're selling gazillions of records and you're writing paychecks to your family and friends and whoever else. So it does seem like, you know, the thing that just kind of tipped it in the other direction for me was seeing pictures of him vacationing in some Caribbean island with on a his yacht. girlfriend on a yacht. <laughs> I was like, I was going to the bowling alley with my boyfriend at 16. And, you know, in our house, you weren't allowed to have sleepovers on the night of the prom. Even though, like, you know, it's like I was leaving on a tour bus three days after my graduation. But I still wasn't allowed to sleep out on prom night. You know, it's yeah. just, it's gotten a little out of control. I sound old. I want, no, I mean, but you know, I, I'm trying to put myself in his mom's shoes with all that's coming at him. She's got to give him something, you know? I know she's a strong, like, Christian woman, born again, and he's like, I want to do this, I want to do that, I want right. to get here. Like, no, you can't, no, you're well, only that's, 16. That's no, the thing. Jesus, I got to give him something. Right, well, that's the thing, is that it, it, it does kind of, you know, skew that parent-child relationship when the kid is the breadwinner in the family. Yo, big time. But I think that the kid has to be taught to still respect the, those chain of commands or they're going to be screwed up later in life, as we've seen. I know, Happened and she's times. on her own. The parents are split, makes it so tough. Because, you know, it's if dad was to there to no. step in, too, and say, right. hey, this is See, the program, kid. my mom, I don't know how she managed to do it, but I, she still does it. I'm 40, and my mom can give me the look, you know, where it's like <laughs> I still get scared. I'm still like, oh, God, my mother's giving me that look that means that I have to shut up now. Um, <laughs> you know, it's that Sicilian mother look. Um, but but seriously, you know, we were. I was one of... I, I still am one of four girls and growing up in our house I did not get special treatment it was not like oh well you know you played Madison Square Garden last night so you don't have to do the dishes my sisters were there waking me up at seven in the morning it's Thursday it's your time to do your day to do the dishes and it kept me grounded Debbie Gibson uh, with some great news a song that you wrote uh, called Rise mm -hmm. right uh, on a short list for an Oscar nomination Yes. For best song. You wrote this song. Debbie, imagine winning, just I, I, I standing know. up at the Academy winning an Oscar. Oh, well, I, you know, it's not even me imagining it. It's other people going, what? You mean the girl who wrote Shake Your Love? Wait, what's happening? Um, but yeah, yeah, but people get this... up after you, after, you, know, you, you I mean, you look, you've never looked better in your life. So Thank they, you. So to stand up there, you say, would wow. Be, well, you know, I mean. Writing is, I, I love performing, I love doing theater, I love doing a lot of things, but being a songwriter is probably the thing that's nearest to my heart. So, you know, to to be honored for the writing is incredible, and I actually wrote it, um, co-wrote the lyrics with my boyfriend, Dr. Rutledge, who made this film, Three Billion and Counting, and it's about... Your boyfriend um, is Dr. Rutledge? Yes, did you call him Dr. Rutledge, or do you call him Only, only on, no, by I'm his not first name. I'm not even going to go there. I was going to just only make in a role really play? naughty joke. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, Nurse Gibson, Nurse Gibson, please. Exactly. To the, uh, that would have been the good answer. To the OR. <laughs> um, so uh, when do you find out about, uh, I mean, the, the, when is the Oscar nomination the, day? They're, they're announced on January 25th. This. And we are very much like, you know, the, the little song that could, because we're not a big film company. There's not going to be a big billboard on Sunset Boulevard saying for your consideration. So we're just counting on the fact that the, the voters have ears and they're listening. And, and, and it's a very depthful song about really about the fact that you can't keep people down. And it's about rising out of your circumstances, rising out of poverty. Um, and it was really a labor of love. I saw the film was very, very moved. And, wasn't really consciously thinking about it, and the song just popped into my head one day. And then 
um, Rutledge jumped in and, and collaborated on the lyrics to, to fine tune it with me, and we're we're thrilled about it. Oh my gosh, how great! And what a what an appropriate song for right now. And it's time to rise up. It's time to stop the finger pointing and the blaming in this in this country. I think people need to come together and lift let's lift the whole program in the U.S. to a uh, to another Absolutely. level. Absolutely, and around the world, it's about human beings and humanity and not it shouldn't be about politics and all the ulterior motives and all of that which is what the movie's about it's about malaria and the banning of ddt and about agendas and we won't get all into that but it it is what you're saying it should people should come first true or false debbie gibson uh you have the number one song in japan right now called (laughs) i love you I don't know if it's right now, but it was a few weeks ago, I believe. Number yes. one in Japan. Number one. I know that that's a, like kind of a big joke. You know, yes, I'm big in Japan. Um, but yeah, I'm going <laughs> to, you know, hey. Hey, yes. there's a lot of people over there in, J- in Japan, and that's a lot of money. It's a music world. You know, there are, yes, there are music fans there. I'm actually going to tour there in two weeks, too. Uh, I'm exciting. doing the Billboard Live Awards there and touring there, and it's really fun. And this album Do is... Do Japanese just- men just, like throw themselves at you and stuff and like, oh, Debbie, Debbie. They I blush want... and bow. <laughs> yeah, oh, I'm like, that's so cute. But I, I, I love men bowing to me. Yeah. That's really fun. <laughs> the, and they give you presents. Um, well, I mean, come on. They give you gifts up. and they bow at they you. They bow and they, yes, they presented me with a beautiful silk kimono when I was there last month. It's great. Oh, that's fantastic. And I wear it when I say Nurse Gibson. Yeah, I was going to say. Dr. Relich. What? Geisha Gibson. Geisha, Geisha Gibson. Gibson to Geisha the Gibson. You're giving me all kinds of ideas. Uh, are you guys? <laughs> now I think I made you blush. Uh, you did. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Debbie, this is very exciting. And um, I'm so glad you're here. And I hope that Thank on you. January 25th, we, uh, we get the good news because we'll be right there in your corner. That would be incredible. I and would. you know what? You'll stand up in front of all those. Academy people and Jack Nicholson and all of them, and they'll say, Jack Nicholson will see you on the Oscar stage and he will say, oh my God, she's hot. <laughs> that would be a moment. Yeah. See, yes. Jack, how do I look? And then I'd say, bow to me. They do it in Japan, darn it. Bow, Jack. <laughs> did you ever have a feud with Tiffany or did the world just want you to have one? They wanted us to have one. We barely crossed paths back in the day because I was on my path, she was on her path and... I always thought, you know, you can own more than one album. You can like more than one song. Why do people have to choose one of us? Um, So I never quite got it, and I was always rooting for her. So I know that's not what people want to hear. And so does she, which is why we made this movie where we pretty much just rip each other's hair out. It's so unbelievable. While saving the planet in hot dresses. This is so great. It's so cool. Sci-Fi's Megapython versus Gatoroid, January 29th at 9 o'clock, features a, how would you describe this catfight between you and Tiffany? It's it's Dynasty 2011. It's It's really great. Uh, It's really fun. We, we, um, we, at one point in the shooting, we were just, we were both like slathered in banana cream pie and whipped cream and stuff and we're like ducking under a table between takes and we just looked at each other and went what the heck are we doing but we just laughed and laughed through through the whole summer shoot and you know I just think when you're in on your own joke it's it's fun for the audience to watch and we get that there was a supposed rivalry and we're playing it out we're giving the pop culture fans what they want isn't that so great it's fun and the sci-fi fans was would you say there's some hair pulling is there any any good fisticuffs did anyone actually take a lick during this thing oh yeah there's there's slapping there's hair pulling there's i i'm i'm on her back i jump her i mean it's one point your face is down on a table she's got your legs up in a wheelbarrow oh yeah Oh, yeah, she steals my awesome six-inch pink shoes. And then I somehow find a pair of, um, like, lumberjack boots in the back of a van in three seconds and manage to put them on and spend the rest of the movie in them because you can't run around saving the planet in six-inch pink pumps. No, you can't. Um, so, yes, it's, as you can see, it's very much based in reality, like the new Paris Hilton show. Yes, based, based in reality. reality with characters. It's um, very raw and appealing, according exactly. to her mom. Oh, my God. I can't wait. Uh, yeah. So anyway, but I, yeah, the movie is the movie is quite something. And Mary Lambert, who did Pet Cemetery and every Madonna video that we all grew up with, directed it. So it's very smart and kitschy and cool and I can't wait. Ridiculous. I, <laughs> sci-fi's Mega Python versus Gatoroid. I love it. January 29th at 9 o'clock. This is awesome. Debbie, I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks for being here.